Today's conversation is sponsored by the Billy Keels Advisory Program. If you want to learn more about how to make your nine to five optional, just go to billykeels.com forward slash advising. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash advising. You're listening to the Going Long Podcast, the number one podcast for the strategies, tactics, and actions high wage earners need for living an intentionally designed life of wealth and resilience. Welcome to the Go Along Podcast. We're back once again to help to continue to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident when it comes to understanding how to go out and create a wealthy and resilient life. I'm your host, Billy Keels, and we're back for another solo episode. You've asked for them, so I'm going to give them to you uh, because apparently you like them. So I also want to say to everyone, as you continue to be here and you continue to share the podcast, really appreciate that. It helps us to continue to remain in the top 1.5% of podcasts globally. Uh, Also, for those of you who are sharing across LinkedIn, across Instagram, we appreciate that. Continue to tag us. Uh, And also for those of you who want to leave an honest written review as well as rating, there's a little video here. You can absolutely do that because it also helps to give more exposure to the the podcast. So we're well over 390 episodes at this point in time. And well, the future is looking very, very bright. So uh, for those of you who want to find out more about previous episodes, just go to billykeels.com forward slash podcast. Uh, once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash podcast. So one of the things I want to get into, because this is right, helping you to to understand how to go out and create uh, and build that that life that is a, a life full of wealth and a life full of resilience, because this is something that I know is in, important for you. It's something that's you know very much been important to me, and, and we're going to continue to share that with you. So so many of you that are here have had corporate experience, corporate exposure, or you're currently in corporate and you're here earlier on in your career than I was. Uh, and there's one thing that I have really come to recognize that if you don't get this right, you can get stuck in the same trap that I was stuck in for quite a long time, right? Um, I want to just say from the very beginning, there are so many positive attributes of corporate life. Corporate's been absolutely fantastic uh, for me. Uh, it was uh, a way to see the world, uh, ex- expand my my horizons beyond just the t- t- place where I was born, Columbus, Ohio, and introduced me to so many different cultures, so many different people. Uh, one of the reasons I've continued to be here in Europe over two decades. So, but but the thing is, is that there is this dark side of corporate, and I want to shed a light on that just so that you are aware of it. Because sometimes it can get lost in the glamour and the glitz and all the benefits. And I'm talking about specifically those of you who are in, uh, like I was, I was in a high six figure paid salary kind of role um, that had, I was working for a a tech company in the software where there are large margins. And sometimes it's easy to get lost in that dark side of corporate. And so I want to talk to you about that. Uh, This is specifically for those of you who are high wage earners, maybe you're in the middle management or upper portion of management for these very large multinational companies, um, or maybe you're in a tech company or small startup and and you're having large margins, lots of growth. Um, I think you're going to understand a lot of what we're talking about or what I'm talking about today. So let me just take you back a little bit because the way that I grew up, I grew up in a middle class, maybe a lower middle class family, uh, watch my parents who neither of the two of them, one didn't go to college, one started college, didn't finish, but really understood the value of working and working hard. A lot of times I watched my parents work two jobs, sometimes even three jobs. Um, and the the point there is that growing up as a kid, like that leaves a, um, it leaves in your brain, like, okay, like the way to make life is to go out and to work multiple jobs, um, trade your time for dollars and, and do that. And that was until I started really watching and paying attention and really listening to my parents. Because what my parents were saying was, hey, listen, don't do what I've done. Um, I want you to go out and make sure that you get a high paying job so you don't have to put in so many hours. So the way that they loved and cared for us was fantastic because these were lessons that we were learning early on. We were hearing one thing and seeing another because they had different life uh, choices, different life decisions. Um, But one of the things that they helped us to understand was in order to get those high paying jobs, you have to get, quote unquote, the education like Some things have changed now. Uh, I have a different philosophy on that, but the idea was that's how I grew up. So I wanted to focus on money, being able to go out and make money, but I knew in order to do that, I had to get good grades in school. After I got good grades, I had to go to the right college and I had to get good grades there. And then that was going to help me to get a job because that's what I heard. 
And so once I did those things, yeah, you know what? I got good grades. I got two university degrees from Miami of Ohio. Big shouts out to Miami. Uh, and then I got a really great job. And now that job completely changed the trajectory of my life, gave me the opportunity to see 58 countries before I was 26 years old, um, doing that in a five-star manner. I'm sure I'll, if I ha- if you haven't heard that story already, I'm sure I'll tell that to you in the future. Um, but the thing is, is afterwards, I started working for market leading companies. And whether I was doing that travel role that I'd mentioned to you before and seeing the 58 countries or started getting in the, the really good fortune of working in the high tech space, specifically started in hardware for a market leading company. Just go to my LinkedIn profile. You can see which one it is. Uh, and then I moved from there to software. Now, I thought hardware was really cool. But when I moved to software and enterprise software, it was like it was amazing walking in. And nowadays it's it's the norm. But you walked in, there's foosball tables, ping pong, free coffee, uh, free drinks all day long, all evening drinks. I mean, non-alcoholic drinks, by the way. Uh, unless there was a party in the evening, but we won't go there. And the thing is, uh, working in these market leading companies, it was absolutely fantastic. So I started the things that I heard from my parents, I was actually living. And so as I got my good jobs, my great jobs, what I started doing was working more hours because that's what I saw before. So I got the good jobs. I was making a lot of money. I was then working lots and lots and lots of hours because I wanted to continue to be at the top before the, the recognition came in the form of a grade. Next in the corporate world, it was, you know, whether I was in the top talent program or was rookie of the year, it was all because I would continue to work hard, the same work ethic that I saw from my parents. And I was, you know, busting my backside to be able to work and get a 2% raise, a 5% raise, uh, hopefully the promotion. So then I was competing against my colleagues. And if I got the promotion, great. And they were upset. And if they got the promotion, then I was upset. And it was just this whole like, thing that was going on because that's what I was, I was competing. I was working lots and lots of hours and I was making, you know, two, three, four, five, six, maybe 8% uh, raise on an annual basis. One of the worst things ever, because I was constantly nervous going in, had felt like I had to justify my worth at the annual reviews, probably do a whole episode on that one. But anyway, so, so when I realized that that's the environment that I was in and that's where I was competing, I also felt like inside that there was like this imposter syndrome going on because, you know, there were, as I moved into certain spaces, like in the high tech space in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't study high tech. So I was like, I was out there, I was doing all these hours, but I wasn't, I didn't have an engineering background. I didn't know about most of the technology and stuff. So there was this inferiority complex, this, this imposter syndrome that was going on. And, you know, was it a matter of, do I just keep doing more hours, learning more stuff? And and all of this was happening. Uh, on the inside over a number of years, right? And then one day I was thinking to myself, like, am I just going to keep doing this forever? Like, am I going to keep doing this until I'm 65? Because the thing is, when I moved, like in the beginning, there was a lot of uh, working, seeing the world, it was fantastic. And then as I moved into high tech, I realized, wow, I'm in an area where there's constant growth, even in like 2008 financial crisis, like the world was falling down, but like we were supposed to increase double digit growth. And that never, ever stopped. And was I going to do that until I was literally 65? Running around and around and around thinking, okay, there's synergies, there's layoffs, all this kind of stuff. Was that my path? I just didn't know. Like, I just felt weird. But I, I, one of the things that I did start doing is, like, I didn't, I realized that I didn't want to have to rely 100% on, on corporate life. And then, and I've told this story before, um, when I when I missed a special family event, that was the the catalyst for me to realize like, yeah, I really, really, because I used to say I love my job, but I really liked my job. I didn't realize until I started doing something for myself, what it meant to actually love doing something that, that, that you do in, in terms of work. So I put together my plan and I wanted to make sure that I included travel, having life experiences and and things like that. And also started down my own path, recognizing that in order for me to really be able to travel, experience the life that I wanted to, to show uh, the world to my boys, it was really going to be about how much of the control of the most important asset after you have your health, which was time, how much could I be in control of that? So I set out on a path to continue to learn more about investing. I got, you know, I was watching uh, videos, listening to podcasts just like this one, and, and really expanding my knowledge in a specific area, like having very deep, specific knowledge, I chose real estate to get started. Maybe you chose, you choose something else. 
Maybe you're going to build a business. Maybe you have a new thing that you want to build. It could be a professional services business, or maybe it's a, you want to build the next amazing widget or the next amazing software program or whatever the case may be. But that was really, really, it is really important. And it was really important for me. And so when I left like this two decades worth of work, almost three decades, I realized like along the way, corporate was really, really good to me. Corporate gave me a lot of insights, a lot of opportunities. I mentioned to you before, I got a chance to travel around the world. And so it wasn't necessarily that I just was able to make a lot of money, make a lot of contacts. It also helped me to understand that the skill set that I've brought to the table is not just one that I could use in the corporate world. It's also one that I am continuing to do even in use today, uh, whether that is understanding how a, a go-to-market strategy means, which is if you have an idea, how do you bring people towards you so that they are exposed to the idea that you have, to the new product that you have, and then being able to help them understand the value in that. I learned a lot of that in corporate. And so I realized that, yes, I got to a point where I was able to leave corporate. I was able to leave corporate and do it in a way that actually made sense. I had this new skill set. So, and I was able to leverage the asset that corporate brought to me, helped me with my family as well. And it's a matter of saying, okay, yeah, well, there's so many different things. There's so many different ways to get caught in corporate because it can keep you super, super, super busy, especially when you're in these uh, high tech type of roles or you're in middle management or you're in upper management of large companies. There's always the next call. There's always the QBRs, the quarterly business reviews. There's always filling out your customer relationship management tools or customer experience, whatever you're calling them nowadays. Um, and, and there's always this incest, like this, this, this need to con consistently grow. And that means you're going to be on the phone all the time available with your, uh, with your I iPhone or whatever the case may be. I mean, I, I was talking to uh, one of my advisory students yesterday and, and we were talking about how to set limits, right? Because when you are in a growing role or you're in a highly paid role, you feel this obligation to constantly be available. Well, that's the dark side of any kind of corporation. The question is, what are you doing to make sure that you're leveraging the benefits that those companies can give? You can provide the outputs, the results that they're looking for without selling your soul and every bit of energy and every single minute and every single second of your life, right? So there is a better way. I mean, I talked to you about it. It was, you know, recognized I, I, and I didn't start it in the right way. Like I went the first of my 26 year career. I went the first 16 years, I was all in. I was the guy I mentioned to you before. Like I was doing the special assignments. I was taking the extra hours, the extra roles uh, to move up the ladder because that's what I saw. But then it was the last 10 years, almost the last decade that I realized there's a better way. I can still give the company what it needs. And at the same time, really truly build the life and the lifestyle and the design the life that I really want to design. So hopefully this resonates a bit with you. Um, if you're going down this track and you can kind of feel like you're stuck or you're being sucked into that dark side of corporate and you don't really know how to get out of it, uh, one of the things that I'm doing now is, is working one-on-one -on -one with you know, high-paid executives, uh, people who are in highly stressful roles, who are looking to figure out like you like your role, maybe you thought you loved it, now you realize that you, that you like it, and you just need some help from someone who's not part of your day-to-day. They're not in your job. They're not your boss. They're not, they're, they're someone who's going to help give you an extra perspective, someone who's going to help to hold and keep you accountable so that you can actually get to and build the life and the lifestyle that you truly want um, while you are continuing to work at your role. I did it for a decade. It's possible. But rather than starting like I did it, almost 40, you could start it much sooner, almost 30 or early 30, something like that. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can go to billykeels.com forward slash advising. Uh, and you can find out there's a little application there. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, but more importantly, just if you want to take this story, share it with a couple of friends, share it with family and, and take the ideas. And if you have some questions, well, send it back to me and leave a review or, or whatever the case may be. Because while you're sharing the conversation or the episode or you're going to billykeels.com forward slash advising, I'll be here preparing for the next solo episode or conversation. Uh, so until then, go out and make it a great day. Thank you very much. Today's conversation was sponsored by the Billy Keels Advisory Program. If you're looking to make your nine to five optional and need some help, just go to billykeels.com 
forward slash advising. Once again, that's billykeels.com forward slash advising.